In ancient times, about 20 or 25 million years ago, the Arabian Peninsula began to separate from the African continent. Under the influence of the centrifugal force of the rotation of the Earth, a crack appeared in the crust. Gradually over the millennia, the failure widened, filling with the Indian Ocean. Thus, a wonderful reservoir was born in the tectonic depression, which is now called the Red Sea. Cyanobacteria, or simply sea sawdust, can give the water a reddish-brown color, which may have led to such a vivid name. Egyptians prefer to call their sea green space because in terms of beauty and diversity of the underwater world, it is unparalleled in the Northern Hemisphere. The Red Sea is an excellent degree in everything. The youngest, the warmest, and the most salty. In winter, its average temperature is 23 degrees Celsius, and in summer, it reaches 30 degrees Celsius. Interestingly, this huge water column is heated not only by the tropical sun, but also by the earth mantle, which burns the bottom in the rift zone. Since the Red Sea is located in a dry region, it is constantly experiencing a lack of rainfall. Rare rains, strong winds, and the absence of significant freshwater sources lead to excessive evaporation and high salinity. Green space of Egypt do not dry up just because of the constant water supply from the Indian Ocean through the Bab el Mandeb Strait. Thus, the concentration of salt in these waters becomes particularly useful for humans. It is able to improve blood circulation and remove fluid from the body. The Red Sea owes its crystal purity to the absence of rivers with a constant water course, since it is the rivers that usually carry silt and sand with them, significantly reducing the transparency of seawater. Colored carpet of corals sponges, and algae generously lays the bottom of this unique reservoir, attracting collectors, tourists, and scientists from all over the world. About one and a half thousand species of invertebrates live here, almost as many species of fish, and almost 300 of soft and hard corals. Among the latter is the world's fastest sailing fish, able to move at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour and even more. The abundance of animal life is due in part to coral reefs stretching for as much as 2,000 kilometers along the coastline. Reefs are a kind of life center attracting many marine creatures. But the Red Sea is not only a treasure trove of marine life, but also an exciting adventure for adrenaline lovers. At Seafarers of Antiquity, it had a bad fame because of strong winds and unpredictable currents. Travel to the seabed will open up at least 17 major shipwrecks. The narrowness of the pool, the considerable depth, and the sharp cliffs all together form a stunning geography where large sharks can roam at depths of hundreds of meters while being close to bathing places. The amazing sea continues to present surprises to this day. In 2011 and 2013, it delighted us with the new islands, 
Sholan, and Jadid. Volcanic eruptions along the Zubair archipelago continue to alter the shape of this intriguing reservoir. The landscape and interior of the underwater world are defined, of course, by reefs. They are sometimes referred to as tropical marine forests or underwater gardens for their incredible wealth and magnificence. Underwater landscapes of the Red Sea can be as picturesque as terrestrial. Steep slopes dotted with colorful growths, whimsical shapes, mysterious gorges and grottos attract and delight. Coral reefs occupy only 0.1% of the total ocean floor area and are home to at least a quarter of the world's marine species. It is a triumph of life and an amazing variety concentrated there where underwater gardens blossom. In a unique, carefully balanced ecosystem, each participant living or non-living, plays its role. The daily actions of various organisms maintain the delicate balance of this natural community. The optimal conditions for the development of coral reefs are a depth of up to 50 meters, a temperature of at least 20 degrees Celsius, and transparent salt water rich in dissolved gases and plankton. The coastal or boundary location of reef systems is due to the great depths of the Red Sea, as well as an effective water circulation scheme in the shallow water, which is best suited for corals breathing and feeding. Of course, they can be found at a greater distance from the surface, mainly up to 130 meters, but there they grow much slower. If the favorite place of corals is the crest, since it has the best balance between light and waves, then algae prefer the shallow seabed surrounding the reef. The sandy shoal is often the basis for extensive green meadows, which in turn become important feeding places for local fish. Seagrasses take care of young and weak reef dwellers until they are strong enough to return home. The boundary reefs of the Red Sea are about 6,000 years old. Their structure consists of limestone, which is produced by colonies of coral polyps. Once anchored to a fixed base, polyps and other organisms deposit calcium carbonate around themselves, thereby forming a coral skeleton designed to support and protect the polyp. The accumulation of calcareous sediments goes hundreds of meters deep, while the living organisms that release calcium are always at the very top of the reef. According to Darwin, under this structure, there is a primary volcano, the eruption and subsequent subsidence of which caused the formation of a reef. Coral elevations form and grow as the bottom subsides. If the ground sinks slowly, and the boundary reef grows fast enough to stay at a comfortable depth, a barrier reef is born. If the bottom rises instead, then corals can grow along the entire coast. But having risen above sea level, polyps die, leaving only a limestone skeleton. The formation of coral reefs is an amazing and long process that has not been fully studied. Unfortunately, 
scientists never manage to come to a single version of the emergence of these structures. The first corals on Earth appeared about 450 million years ago and gradually replaced the microbial and spongy reefs that were then prevalent. The mature reefs of the Red Sea are mainly formed of stony corals, acropores, bacillopores, and porites, while the young developing reef is usually dominated by algae, sponges, and soft corals. On average, healthy tropical reefs grow one to three centimeters per year horizontally, and from one to 10 centimeters per year vertically. Interestingly, corals aren't the only reef builders. Coral algae and some sponges also contribute as skeletal calcium carbonate. Reefs are always built by the joint efforts of these organisms, each of which led their construction during its geological period. The importance and benefits of preserving coral reefs cannot be overemphasized. Each of them is essentially a huge organic production plant, although it lives in poor nutrient conditions. With extraordinary productivity, the ecosystem produces up to 30 grams of biomass per square meter a day. The main consumers are tiny organisms that feed on reef fish. In addition to food, reefs provide their inhabitants with shelters of various sizes, seating, barriers for large predators, and durable structures where they can grow, as well as hide from strong waves and storms. It is noteworthy that the same shelters can be regularly used by different types, depending on the time of day. A large number and variety of shelters are considered as the key factor of abundance of reefs. There are also favorable conditions for nurseries and breeding of fish species that are found on the high seas. Thus, tropical marine forests indirectly affect the productivity of their water bodies for many kilometers around. Coral reefs are one of the most generous ecosystems on Earth. They not only support the richness of the flora and fauna, but also improve the quality of human life. We interact with them much more than you think. Fish living on the reefs of the world's oceans are the main source of food for about half a billion people. Even if you live far from the coast, there's a good chance that the fish you eat lived in similar conditions. About 15 tons of fish per square kilometer can be reproduced annually on healthy reefs. The precious resources of underwater gardens also include algae, which are eaten or used to create products. Useful chemical compounds have been found in many local organisms and have been incorporated into new medicines and bioactive food supplements. The cleanliness of these elements is undoubted because many corals and sponges are excellent filters that clean coastal waters from pollution. Reef ridges act as natural barriers in storms. The complex shapes of their underwater walls help to tame the force of the incoming waves, reducing their energy up to 97%. In short, these calcareous formations effectively prevent coastal erosion, material damage, and even loss of life. Tourism and fishing thrive here. Millions of divers come to admire the lush flora and fauna of the Red Sea. 
even more travelers visit reef-fenced beaches. Many people think that the beach sand is mostly made up of shell remains, but it's actually particles of the same corals. Moreover, these remarkable natural structures teach us green building. For several years, innovative cement manufacturing technology based on the method of coral reef formation has been successfully applied. In addition to all these, they are delightful examples of the complexity and beauty of life on our planet. They awaken curiosity, give joy, and aesthetic pleasure. At one glance at this miracle of nature, the soul exalts and the eye rejoices. Unfortunately, human economic activity poses a great threat to the marine treasures of our planet. Since the 1950s, more than half of the world's coral reefs have been damaged or even lost. Fragile formations are very sensitive to environmental conditions, such as temperature, purity, and acid-base balance of water, as well as illumination and traumatic damage. The overfishing of algae feeding fish and the washing away of agricultural land containing chemical fertilizers has led to the rapid growth of greenery inhabiting the reef zone. Thick vegetation can block sunlight and prevent photosynthesis, which is vital for coral polyps. As it turned out, many algae growing on reef territory kill these tiny creatures. Poisonous components do not dissolve in water and require direct contact to show their negative effects. A sea urchin grazing literally day and night absorbs a huge amount of seagrass, thereby breeding corals, but its capabilities are limited. It is regrettable that barbaric fisheries for marine life continue to take place in such a marvelous place. Destructive methods of collecting corals for souvenirs and for aquarium trade cause their stress and death. Because reefs prevent large-scale fishing, in some parts of the world, cyanide and explosives are used to displace them from uncomfortable terrain. Such practices, as well as the use of trawl nets, not only kill reef dwellers indiscriminately, but also cause great mechanical damage to corals. Like an octopus pale with fright, coral polyps respond to stress by whitening, or rather, displacing their cohabitants, the colorful microalgae that live in their bodies. Discolored colonies do not grow and are more easily destroyed by wave activity. Fortunately, the whitewashed areas are not completely devoid of algae and in some cases are repopulated by single-celled comrades of polyps. But still, the main cause of their nervous shocks is considered to be the rise in the temperature of the world's ocean. The first to suffer from global warming are the corals that live closest to the surface. Equally serious is the increasing acidity of ocean water, facilitated by elevated levels of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. Wastewater and sea page of harmful substances pollute the coral habitat, which these creatures absolutely do not tolerate. One of the most effective tools to restore reefs today is the cultivation of corals on special farms. To reduce mortality among young polyps, their larvae are raised in nurseries and then transported to the reef. Also, 
Artificial structures convenient for the growth and development of bottom organisms are placed on the bottom of the sea. This helps small polyps to find a comfortable fixed base for them. But as it is said, it is always better to prevent a problem than to solve it. Each of us can make a small contribution to the long-term survival of such ecosystems. Corals may look like strange stones, but they're actually living creatures. When you're visiting the Red Sea, try not to damage these delicate miniature creations of nature. Remember that by breaking off an outgrowth as a souvenir, you deprive someone of health, shelter, and food. Destruction of these limestone formations for construction purposes is also unreasonable because their exoskeleton can be easily synthesized in laboratory conditions. Taking care of coral reefs directly affects the preservation of a person's current standard of living. Reef ridges resemble a huge fairy tale city built by small laborers, polyps. For many millennia, layering on top of each other, new and newer organisms are able to create a giant colony. Coral polyps are sometimes called marine flowers for their similarity to terrestrial flowers. But in reality, these are animals that do not only tend to hunt, but also to spawn which would seem to be applicable only to fish. Colonial individuals are usually tiny, but their size can vary from 1 to 30 millimeters in diameter. They can only move within their own skeleton. Single polyps, devoid of any mineral backbone, can reach 1.5 meters in diameter and even move along the bottom. Over 6,000 corals are currently known. And despite the variety of reefs, most species live in deep waters. A carpet of flowering animals shimmers with all the colors of the rainbow, from soft yellow and pink to brown and blue. The number of natural shades in its palette reaches 350 but the colors are preserved only in living corals. After death, they lose soft cover tissues and only a white calcium skeleton remains. The abundance of shapes of these creatures, which can be round, flat, branched, and finally have simply incredible outlines is also striking but still many of them are similar to terrestrial objects, as their names suggest. Pillar, wire, table, deer horn, broccoli, and even carnation. The prickly rough surface of the exoskeleton helps the waves break the boundary layer of water surrounding an underwater body. Streams breaking up the extremely uneven edges of corals destroy this fixed layer, providing polyps with access to passing nutrients. The framework of the colony of these bottom invertebrates has an interesting structure. On the skeleton slice, you can see annual and daily rings, very similar to wooden ones. Branches of many living corals indicate an age of hundreds and at great depths, even thousands of years. A study of fossils showed that in the distant past, there were not 365, but even 390 and even 400 days a year on Earth. Fragile marine flowers can be protected by two types of framework. External when polyps occupy cup-shaped depressions on the surface of coral, and internal, as in soft corals. 
In the latter case, the skeleton is located inside of the body in the form of limestone or collagen elements. Numerous colonial polyps are connected to each other by their bases, while independent individuals sit on the sole or petal disc intended for permanent or temporary fastening. The body structure of these unusual organisms includes the nervous system, muscles, tentacles, mouth, and stomach. All that a night predator needs for hunting. Tentacles have special explosive cells with a burning liquid that causes paralysis of the victim. Polyps, as a rule, sleep during the day, hiding in their niches, and at night, they stretch out and spread their tentacles, as if unleashing like fantastic flowers. They often hunt together, and first of all, for plankton, but can pick up even a bigger prey, a crustacean, a shrimp, and even a small yawning fish. Polyps themselves become food for crabs, shells, snails, starfish, and larger fish. However, in clean tropical waters, there are not enough nutrients to provide the necessary growth rate and life in shallow water when the bottom settles. In this situation, polyps had to enter into an ancient partnership with single-celled algae, symbionts. These microorganisms live in the tissues of marine flowers, giving them color and virtually replacing the missing organs. Symbionts provide up to 90% of invertebrate nutrition, supplying glucose, glycerol, and amino acids. They also contribute to the formation of the coral skeleton, produce oxygen for their breathing, and remove waste. All this is possible due to the ability of symbiotic algae to photosynthesize, which polyps cannot perform. Since the rate of photosynthesis depends on the intensity of light, corals thrive only in pure, transparent water with minimal amounts of mineral and organic particles. In exchange, as an example of reciprocity, invertebrates shelter their cohabitants. On average, a million pure cubic centimeter of coral and provide a constant supply of the carbon dioxide they need for photosynthesis. There are many interesting examples of mutually beneficial behavior in this complex ecosystem. So hard, large coral heads often serve as a cleaning station for some species of animals and fish that use a bumpy surface to free themselves from dead skin or parasites. We need to remember that all colorful, full of life reefs began precisely with corals. Fortunately today, they are protected by the law of many states that have banned the export of local fauna outside their territory. Densely populated reefs give their guests and observers a truly vivid impression. In addition to the great variety of shapes and colors, under the sea surface, there is a peculiar way of life of its inhabitants, known and unknown, highly developed and simple forms. Each resident of the reefs is attractive in its own way. One of the smartest mammals on Earth is a dolphin. In the Red Sea, Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins, breaking all the records of intelligence among the representatives of the fauna of the world's oceans, are widespread. 
The bottlenose dolphins are warm-blooded like humans, and their lifespan is comparable to that of humans. In the wild, males live on average 40 to 45 years, females a little more, about 50. They are able to dive up to 300 meters, but most of their time they spend in shallow water. Bottlenose dolphins breathe through the lungs and periodically have to float up for a new dose of air. If water enters the lungs, the animal may choke and drown. They, like all cetaceans, sleep as close to the surface as possible. A light blow of the hanging tail occasionally pushes them out of the water for another breath. Sleep in one hemisphere helps dolphins to sleep and move at the same time. Due to this, both parts of their brain rest alternately for the same amount of time. Bottlenose dolphins' eyes are wonderfully adapted to see both underwater and in the air. If a person is forced to wear a mask when diving, dolphins, being on land, simply rearrange their vision to the changed conditions. In bright light, their pupil takes the form of an arc that looks like a funny smiley face. The female are very caring mothers. They give birth to one child every few years and devote almost all their time to their care. Only in the sixth year of life, the younger generation begins to lead an independent life. The Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins are great fans of games and entertainment. They play catch up, pass algae to each other with their pectoral fin, or learn different tricks from each other. Animals like to ride the waves created by high-speed vessels. To surf, they bend the tail in a certain way and use the pressure of the wave. By adding their own effort, they can jump from the stern wave to the forward wave and even overtake the vessel for a few seconds. During the marital courtship, the dolphin presents his Lady of the Heart with various gifts in the form of shells, corals, and sea sponges. Sponge, as you know, is indispensable in the household. It's worn on the nose to protect the face from damage when searching for food in the bottom soil. Bottom nose dolphins are excellent hunters who know how to combine a variety of techniques and methods of fishing, changing tactics depending on the situation. They distribute roles and hunt together like a wolf pack. There are cases of collaborative fishing with a person when dolphins surround the joint and keep it near the boats. Having done their job, they nod and whip their tails against the water, giving signs to people. The fish that escaped the nets go to the dolphins. Efficiency, coherence, and speed allow them to gain food quickly and to devote the remaining time to themselves, relationships with relatives, or the training of cubs. Echolocation helps animals navigate underwater and search for prey. These animals are very well versed in the chaos of the sea. Understand the direction and distance from which the sound comes, and even calculate the number of objects from which it comes. Surprisingly, in the course of their evolution, cetaceans have acquired an incredible skill to receive, decipher, and transmit a three-dimensional sound picture of the world around them, or more simply, to see with sound. The range of frequencies that dolphins pick up is 10 times wider than human. 
their ability to receive a weak signal and discern its changes is also tens of times greater than that of humans. The so-called dolphin language is a complex signal system that consists of sounds and body movements. The bottlenose dolphins skillfully control their complex voice apparatus. Some of the transmitted messages are analogous to the echo signals received from different objects. Immediately during the echolocation process, animals make short, squeaky clicks, which are far beyond our hearing. In order to communicate with each other, they use pulses with a frequency of 7 to 20,000 hertz, such as whistling or barking during the chase, meowing while feeding, clapping to intimidate their relatives, and many other sounds, including those describing the emotional state of the dolphin. In their daily conversations, dolphins use about 7,000 signals, many of which are in ultra and infra ranges that we're not able to perceive. For comparison, the active vocabulary of a person contains from 10 to 20,000 words. Each dolphin has its own individual signal, the so-called whistle autograph or acoustic passport containing all the information about a particular individual. It is a distinctive whistle lasting about a second. Getting acquainted, animals introduce themselves and can also talk about other dolphins in their absence. As for body language, at present, about 180 signs of communication are revealed. This includes different ways of swimming, poses, jumps, fin touches, and so on. Among the few deciphered gestures is a crackling mouth expressing anger and discontent. When a dolphin encounters something new, frightening, but attractive, it exhales for a long time, releasing many bubbles. According to the latest scientific evidence, these highly organized beings have social consciousness, self-awareness, and emotional compassion. They are the only wild animals that show interest in communication and friendship with humans. In the course of research, we were able to learn a lot from them. Some scientific developments are nothing more than taking advantage of the benefits of these mammals. The idea of catching a reflected wave is widely used in satellite navigation. Dolphins can reach speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour, which is higher than that of some ocean vessels. Such possibilities are given not only by muscle strength, but also by the shape and smooth surface of the body. Excellent streamlining and gliding became the standard in the creation of costumes for professional swimmers, which served as a push to a number of new speed records. In the development of modern submarine skin, an analogy with the skin of a dolphin was used. Elastic materials covering the rigid body of the submarine perform the function of noise suppression. Contrary to the above, the greatest threat to life of these miraculous creatures is human beings. Poaching, overfishing, ocean pollution, and constant noise disturbance cause them much suffering. Despite all the troubles caused by man to the dolphin, in most cases, it remains curious and friendly to Homo sapiens. Its playful whistle and enthusiastic laughter lift our mood, and interaction improves the state and well being of a person. The octopus cyanea is like a giant heart. 
It has the highest intelligence among invertebrates and the most complex organization among cephalopods. One of its three hearts drives blue blood all over the body, and the other two push it through the gills. The brain is comparable in development to a dog's, but in the case of Cyania, it is distributed throughout the body. Due to the significant accumulation of neurons in the extremities, the tentacles themselves reflect on how to perform this or that task. They can transmit information to each other without the knowledge of the brain, which contains only 10% of neurons. Tentacles are coordinated by themselves, and each of them can move independently. Suction cups of the octopus, unlike man-made ones, require constant muscle effort when holding an object or the cyania itself on a surface. A giant mollusk can change its shape beyond recognition. It can spread out across the bottom and become completely flat or pass through a tiny hole that is not comparable to the size of its body. It may seem that the octopus consists entirely of soft tissues, but in fact, its mouth is equipped with two powerful jaws, similar to a parrot's beak, and a sharp ribbon of teeth, which is called a radula. The radula is used to drill shells. After the beak and the ribbon of teeth, they use the paralyzing poison. While most octopus species lead a nightlife, Cyania is active at dawn and dusk. It prefers to hunt from an ambush, skillfully disguising itself and merging with the environment. This extraordinary animal is able to change the color, pattern, and texture of its skin hundreds of times in a few hours. If the mollusk is scared, it turns white. If it is angry, it turns red. Being near the prey or running away from the pursuer, the octopus sometimes releases a dark cloud of ink. For some time, the fluid is kept compact, allowing the octopus to disorient the victim or the attacker. After the hunt, the cyania returns to its lair, which can either be a crevice in the rock or a shelter among the corals, or even a pit dug in a stone or sand. The most suitable burrow has a narrow entrance, a wide view, and a spacious cavity. It is always easier to protect a small entrance from a predator, and it's easy for a plastic mollusk to slide in. It regularly cleans its dwelling with a stream of water from the funnel and puts scraps from the outside into a garbage heap. The octopus is a territorial loner, but this does not prevent him from settling next to similar-sized octopodes. Each of these animals has a pronounced personality. Its own temperament, reactions, and habits are formed without any parental training. In particular, they have strongly expressed individual preferences in food and in the way it is obtained. Some prefer crabs and others fish or shellfish. Among those who like shellfish, there are also different approaches to eating your favorite dish. Breaking the shell by force, biting the edges, stretching the folds until the mollusk gets tired or drilling the shell with the ribbon of teeth. 
each individual chooses its own option. Octopuses have the potential to learn, have good memory, and are able to use tools and solve puzzles. They also have the ability to regenerate and edit their own genes for better adaption. And if dolphins are conventionally called people of the sea, then octopuses were awarded the title of primates of the sea depths. They can get into a fishing boat and open the hold to eat freshly caught crabs, if necessary, erect a dwelling with an improvised tool such as a coconut shell. And when the cephalopod has nothing to do, it will most likely start playing with the object it likes. It may seem incredible, but they are capable of gratitude, react emotionally to different sensations, and remember them. The octopus cyania lives only 12 to 15 months and is genetically programmed to die after conception and the birth of offspring. It is difficult to imagine what heights of development they could achieve with a longer life. And this exotic and slightly strange inhabitant of the sea is called cuttlefish. Its name literally means centipede, which is not quite right because the tentacles of the cephalopods serve as arms. Along with squids and octopus, cuttlefish are highly organized animals with complex behaviors. They have excellent memory and a well-developed nervous system, and they also have blue blood in their veins, which is pumped by three hearts. Nature gave these animals huge watery eyes, from which it is simply impossible to break away. The pupil most often resembles the letter W and gives a 360-degree view, which is even more than that of an octopus. Seeing everything around you is extremely important for good protection and the successful hunting of small shellfish. In this case, we also deal with individuality, but the bulk of cuttlefish are cautious and timid, like octopuses. Once they feel the danger, they burrow into the sand, resort to color camouflage, or launch ink bombs covering their escape. When attacked by a predator, animals move rapidly backwards, pushing water out of the siphon. Virtuously camouflaging, cuttlefish can imitate the color, shape, and texture of the surrounding objects. Rapid discoloration indicates stress, but it can also be used to communicate with others. So during the marriage period, charming centipedes radiate a fantastic blue glow. Inclined to play and even intrigue, some males pretend to be females to avoid competition. But their secrets do not end there. Cuttlefish have another name, sepia. These incredible animals have made a great contribution to the development of human cultures. For many centuries, people wrote with cuttlefish ink. Paint made from them has long been in demand among artists. Thus, the name of the color sepia comes from a rich brown pigment obtained once from the ink bag of the common cuttlefish sepia. In the Red Sea, not only large mammals and mollusks can be found, but also reptiles of impressive sizes. The sea green turtle weighs from 70 
to 200 kilograms, and the length of its shell reaches one and a half meters. Life expectancy is similar to ours and is 80 years. Unlike terrestrial turtles, sea turtles cannot hide in their shell, retracting their heads and limbs. Their front fins are adapted to active swimming and holding their prey, while their hind legs help reptiles to steer while moving and to dig nests in the sand. Males have a long tail that protrudes far beyond the shell, and females are marked by short claws and a neat small tail. The diet of green turtles depends on age. At the beginning of life, they are predators, but over time, most of them become strictly herbivores. They often visit coastal coves, lagoons, and shoals with lush grass meadows. Coral reefs provide a diet of red, brown, and green algae, and also provide protection from predators and storms. Due to the low nutritional value of bottom plants, animals have a relatively slow growth rate. Their vegetation preferences also affect the color of the fat that is under the shell. That's why these sea turtles are called green. While eating, they remain the roots of the seagrass untouched, which stimulates its growth and maintains health. In addition, low vegetation is a more suitable breeding ground for many fish species. Suckerfish are frequent companions and orderlies of sea turtles. They may appear to be freeloaders, but in reality, they play an important role in nature, sparing their hosts from a variety of parasites. For their service, suckerfish receive crumbs of food that have not fallen into the reptile's mouth and the opportunity to eat plankton from the oncoming stream when the turtle swims. Attaching with a vacuum suction cup located on the head, they do not affect the speed of movement of their carrier. Peculiar and inventive fish try to suck up to the hosts in pairs so as not to be bothered about finding a partner in the future. Having reached puberty by the age of 30, green turtles begin to migrate between feeding grounds and nests, and in some cases, traveling distances of more than 25 kilometers. Nature has endowed these reptiles with a kind of internal compass just like that of migratory birds. Uncommon navigation abilities are associated with the presence of special sensory organs that allow turtles to feel the magnetic field of the earth and fix its configuration in their home areas. They use these specific pictures of the magnetic field in their further trips to their spawning grounds favorite sleeping corners, or green fields from algae. The ability to analyze geomagnetic information shows up literally from the first days of life. Barely in the water, the turtles take a course to the Sargasso Sea to spend the first five years of their life there. In addition to brilliant navigational abilities, Animals have good color perception, although they do not see many colors in the orange-red part of the spectrum. Sea turtles are perfectly adapted to life underwater, but at the same time are not able to consume dissolved oxygen in water as fish do. During the period of activity, reptiles often float up to breathe with their external slowness, they have an extremely intense metabolism. During sleep or rest, the metabolism decreases, making it possible to stay underwater 
for a long time. Oxygen in the lungs and in other tissues of the body allows them to sleep for hours in the ledges of rocks or reefs. The ability to hold their breath is also affected by stress, so turtles quickly drown in trolls and other fishing gears. Boat strikes, fishing nets without holes for turtles, pollution and destruction of habitats are included in the list of unintentional threats to the survival of the family. These risks are often even more serious than poaching and egg harvesting, as they are difficult to control. Only a small fraction of the turtles are destined to reach maturity, but those who manage this with their entire lives are a unique example of perseverance and endurance, which is undoubtedly worthy of imitation. The hawksbill sea turtle is a close relative of the green turtle, but has a number of interesting features. It differs in smaller sizes and a powerful beak that visually lengthens the face. Narrow and sharp, it is great for finding and capturing food among coral clefts. Unlike green turtles, the hawksbills do not migrate but feed all year round on the reefs opposite their nests. Although their main food is sea sponges, they are omnivorous and do not mind eating soft tree corals or jellyfish. The large upper eyelids protect their eyes from mechanical damage and the poison of cnidaria. By controlling the population of jellyfish eating fish eggs, turtles help fish to reproduce. By eating sponges, they make room for other organisms living on the reef, in particular, the same corals. The importance of hawksbill's turtles for reef survival is enormous, as only one turtle absorbs about half a ton of sponges per year. Despite the fairly wide range, this species is also threatened as the eggs of the hawkbills are still considered a delicacy in many countries, and their shells are still used to obtain a turtle bone. Polyethylene bags drifting in the reef zone are often taken by the hawksbills as jellyfish, which naturally leads to digestive disorders and death. Another intriguing thing about them is that they are able to glow. Fluorescence was previously thought to be peculiar to corals, jellyfish, and some fish. Many scientists believe that this feature is necessary for the inhabitants of the depths to communicate with each other. Specifically, it allows fish to exchange signals secretly without being seen by predators with different eye structures. Coral reefs and their inhabitants seem to have come off the pages of children's coloring books. The underwater world of the Red Sea oh, looks so enchanting. Behind the play of shades and shapes, the healing properties and commercial value of this ecosystem is a balance perfected by millions of years of evolution. It is very easy to break it, and it is extremely difficult to restore. Today, the survival of reefs depends primarily on humans. <laughs>